and then uh, and then he went he went out then the other the other guys came mm. they were all just changing one after another i was not feeling any pain i was just i was just numb it was like i can see that somebody is on top of me but i just see some person bumping on me but i don't feel anything at all my whole body was just numb i'm how Lazwani, married to a handsome husband lungi Lazwani. we're blessed with a very handsome son kete Lazwani. i was born in Forestbeck, Mashae, a very small township in the Free State. Um, I grew up there up until I was um, doing grade eight, um, which is around about I think I had I was having 13 years old, and then I moved to Durban. I was adopted by my aunt and her husband. So before I moved to Durban, when I was staying in Free State with my mother, my father and my grandmother, I never really had um, childhood. So I, I don't really know what it feels like to be a child, what it feels like to be a kid, go outside and play with other kids. I would go play, but it was um, nothing like being a kid. It was just me forcing the situation that time. So my parents, when I was growing up, they were physical to each other. They used to verbally abuse each other. They used to physically abuse each other in front of me. So that really um, damaged um, the way I think, the way I see the world, the, the way I just view things and the way I interpret love or I see love as a person. So imagine being that small like you, you're doing great from grade two grade three you're really experiencing this life of violence i would go to school with a shirt that is uh, full of blood because they were fighting in the middle of the night and all those sort of things so that really really I still have flashbacks of those because um, when they're fighting, I mean, you're a kid, you love both of them, you, 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 you feel helpless, but you want to help, you just don't know what to do. In the midst of all that, um, they got sick, both, I mean, um, all of them, the three of them, my father, my mother, and my grandmother. Um, I, w I would be the one nursing them. As, as small as I was and we were living with uh, my little sister as well which also by that time was also depending on me for her to eat and uh, just for somebody to take care of her when they were all sick so I would go to school um, having to go to school go to like during break times I have to come back and make sure that they all have their medication they have eaten and everybody is fine in the house and really the day the days were very very short for me because i had so much in my hands to do i mean i was still a kid and i didn't understand a lot of things a, a lot was going on the school then there's these three people that are looking at me and then i have to nurse them and all so um it was really tough like really 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 tough um to a point whereby um when all the three of them were sick if anything was happening to me whether uh, it, it's emotionally wise I, I need to talk to someone or there's anything that's happening to me i cannot really reach out because um these people are sick and also even if they were not sick my mother's character it's it, it's not somebody that i could open up to Yes, she was my mom and all, and she was also a person who, who was an alcoholic. Like, she drank too much, she drank a lot. I would get called by people to say, no, um, you must come take your mother. She's drunk and sleeping somewhere. You get there, the dress is on the face, she's not wearing anything underneath. You feel, before you feel embarrassed, you, you, you feel angry, you feel mad, and you feel sad. It's not something that you want to, to see as a child. I mean, it, it's traumatizing. It's traumatizing because it becomes the talk of the town. So there was the situation that happened then. And then um, time went by, time went by. Then uh, we stayed with this other guy that um, my grandmother took in. 
um, when my mother was sick and my father was sick. So my grandmother took in this guy to come and just help around the house with things that we do just to stay with us in G. So this guy at the, at the beginning, he was fine. I mean, um, I, I could see him as my older brother. Everything was fine in the beginning and everything was just perfect and okay. Until um, the other night when he forced himself on me. So what happened was um, we had two two houses like there was big house where we were all sleeping and then there was other small house outside where i used to wash the dishes and do everything in there so the other night i go in there uh, to go and wash the dishes uh, i i come inside and immediately i come in he closes the door when he closes the door I already felt uncomfortable. I could already sense that no man, that, that there's something wrong here. This, the, it, it just doesn't feel right. The environment was just not good. I could just feel that something was happening. And then um, he closed and then he said, yeah, today you're gonna give me what you always give to other guys. Like today you're gonna give it to me. I'm like, what are you talking about? And then he took me, he threw me, um, there was, there was a bed in, in, in that kitchen. That's where he was sleeping. He threw me on that bed and then uh, he took off my clothes. He did whatever he was doing. I cried, like I cried, but no one could hear me because um, it, it was a kitchen, but it was a little bit far. And then after he, did, he, he finished what he was doing, I just took my clothes, I wore them, and then um, I went back into the house and then I just didn't say anything to anyone because because of the situation that I have already explained because of um, that they were all sick and I just didn't want to bother anyone with anything. Then life just went back to normal. We were living in the same house. I would look at him every day knowing exactly what he had done even though I was afraid to go back and wash the dishes every day. If I, I would always make excuses not to go and wash the dishes and wash them in the morning. And then um, to fast forward, my mother became even more sick to a point whereby um, she couldn't move, she couldn't do anything. But before that, uh, my father became sick for like two weeks maybe or three weeks, maybe even a month, I'm not sure. But um, he got sick for a very short period of time and then he passed away. So it was just me now and my grandmother when my mother got really 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 sick so she would just uh, lock herself in the in, in the bedroom and not open for me so i would want to go there and see her but there was no other way she would lock herself in there so i would dish up dish up food for her and then put them by the door if she took them that day then it means um she could wake up if she didn't then it means um she's really sick that day but there's really nothing that i could do that much until such day that um she didn't take the food then even the second day she didn't take the food then we had to call an ambulance then we called the ambulance they had to break in into the house uh, the skin was peeling off the skin was peeling off on her body and um they couldn't they couldn't touch her anyway so it was four of them they had to carry her out with the sheet so they were standing on all the four corners of the sheet to carry her out outside of the bedroom into the ambulance so she went to the hospital that day and then i couldn't go see her because i had no money and the hospital was very far then my half brother which we were not staying with the two families were not really getting along from my father's previous wife so he came to me and asked me if I would love to go and see my mother. I said, yes, I would love to go. He said, we can make a plan. I don't have money, but we can try something out. Then I was like, okay, it's fine. Let's um, try whatever that you say we can try so that we go and then I see what is, then we'll see on the way what transpires. Then he came to me and told me that um, I managed to, to raise 15 rents so we can go. Mind you, that 15 rand is not even uh, transport for two people going to that location of the hospital. 
but um, because I really wanted to see my mother with the state she left in nobody's taking food to her nobody's taking anything she's just there like like somebody who doesn't have any family so I told him no it's fine if you say we can make a plan we can make a plan let's go I think it was on Thursday on that year I was doing my grade 8 so we went um, summer in Lilin to to hike Kuma track and then one truck stopped then when we were inside my brother told the truck driver that um, okay we don't have money the only thing we have is 15 rands but please we beg you can you please um, take us to this location we were already in the middle then the truck driver just told my brother that no you know what I, I can't do this you guys are gonna have to to get off my truck I can't take you where you want to go for free then we had to get off there was no going back or going forward so now um, we stood there waited for another truck so when this other truck came it stopped and then uh, we went in we didn't we just told the guy that okay you know what um, we don't have money but um, we want to go to this place uh, because this person is sick we need to go see this person in the hospital but now uh, we don't have money we just got off this other truck this is what happened he said no it's fine you can, can, you can get it inside then we went in when we were supposed to get off he told my brother that hey do you think that you can just drive and then come here and then you don't pay there's nothing for free in this world it's either i take your sister or you find some other ways to pay then i could see he was confused he didn't know what else to do then um i just told him i'll handle it because i knew already at the back of my mind what the guy wants to do so i let the guy do what he wanted to do so the guy raped me <sighs> So I could see I could see that my brother was very very confused. He didn't know what to do. We never spoke about it. It was like it's nothing that's ever happened because he can't do anything about it and I didn't want to talk about it as well. To me it was just like whatever. My pride was taken away anyway. So why what what's going to change now if he does whatever he's going to do? There's there's nothing that is really going to change. And then we went back home. I mean, we went to, 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 to the hospital. It was nine o'clock in the morning. When we got to the hospital, they told us that um, the patients, you will only be able to see the patients at 3 p.m. We don't have money. We don't know how we're gonna go back home. We don't have anything to eat. It's nine o'clock in the morning. We have to wait for 3 p.m. to be able to see this person. So we had no other choice. We are here already. Like we've we've come so far. A lot has happened on the way coming this side. We can't just give up and say, okay, it's fine, we will go home. I, we sat there, we waited. I remember sitting outside those benches of that hospital, seeing other patients go up and down and thinking that I would see my mom also maybe trying to go to to the loo or anything but um i couldn't see i couldn't see her so around 3 p.m then uh, they told us that okay you can come and see the patient they showed us the word i went into that ward. i was going up and down looking for her i could, couldn't find her i just couldn't see her then i asked this other nurse that i'm looking for i'm looking for agnes i'm looking for agnes mpin she's like uh but that's her there by the corner. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not her. She, I couldn't recognize her. She was unrecognizable. I was like, no, 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 it's not her. She said, yes, it's her. Go take a closer look. I was like, no, it's not her. I went to the bed. As I walked towards the bed, I began crying. When I got to the bed, like, um, the hair was falling off. The blood was coming out of the mouth, out of the nose out of the ears and then they had tied her on the bed like somebody who is mentally disturbed they had tied her like somebody that 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 runs away that jumps out of the bed and runs away and i i stood there i was looking at her and i, I was like 
the last thing she said to me was mm. and then she said nothing else i was asking her can you see me i'm here to see you please say something she couldn't say anything anymore and then i couldn't take it anymore just standing there looking at her so i went out crying then my brother he comforted me and all he told me okay at least we were able to see her we were able to to to, to see how bad the situation is please just take heart and try to be strong you saw for yourself how the situation is fortunately this time around when we were going back home uh, when we were just walking trying to to figure out how we're gonna go back home my brother saw his uh, friend and then he told me that ah okay they began gracing each other and he was like ah where are you guys going then he told them that okay no i'm going back home i just came to do a few things here then it's like oh okay then he told me that uh, he told him that um we need transport going back home we don't have money this is how we came and all the friend was like no okay fine um i'll just finish up whatever i'm doing then we can all go back home so we all went back home it was on thursday then friday i went to school to did my normal routine of making sure that my granny gets her medication gets her food and all that then i went to school on monday on monday when i get to school everybody's just looking at me in a very weird way as as, as if like they like to me why are you here then the teachers called me into the staff room i remember it was my class teacher and the other three teachers that was now when i was doing grade eight remember so it was the first year of high school so when i get there the teachers were like are you are you okay do you need counseling so looking back by that time I, I i didn't really understand what they were saying and what they were referring to but when i reflect back i can see that they were saying that there's something wrong with me but um they didn't know what it was i was just a distracted kid but they just didn't know even how to help me but now there was also another issue now in place um that's why they called me then they were like okay if you say you are fine and everything is is well you can go back to class when i go back to class my best friend it was my best friend then she called me and said um do you know anything about your mother i'm like what do you mean do i know anything about my mother she's like yeah but um i had rumors that your mother passed away then i'm like to her mm -mm that i don't know if she had passed away we would have known how come everybody else knows besides me and my grandmother so that's not possible she was like oh okay that's fine but that's what i had then i went home after it was after school then i went home i asked my grandmother that i hear people saying my mother passed away this this at school then my grandmother was like no um those are just lies it's just rumors if she had passed away we would have known okay i let it be i also just uh, think about it that way that okay if she had passed away we would have known then days went by it's this this rumor is just keep it keeps on growing and growing and growing she's she's just declared as a dead person in the whole township then i asked my my grandmother can somebody go to the hospital in from one of my cousins that are old and and they are working maybe they have money for transport can somebody go back and and go to the hospital and just find out what is going on or even make a phone call my grandma was like okay i will ask it was tuesday it was wednesday it was thursday nothing was happening on a friday i went back to her can you please then um she she asked one of our cousins to go to the hospital to confirm so when she came back she came back with the news that yes uh, my mom had passed away she passed away that very same day we came to see her so after we left she just passed away so i began to cry i remember the cousin told me please stop making noise you know your mom was an alcoholic she was a drunkard so just don't cry don't make noise i cried anyway that thing really hurt me it hurt me so bad that even today when i think about it I just asked myself who does that what kind of a human being is that but anyway it happened it didn't end there 
after hearing that she passed away now the family has confirmation that my mom passed away nobody is doing anything about it we're just carrying on with our normal lives but we know that there's a corpse of there's my mom's corpse lying around somewhere there in a public hospital nobody's just doing it's just doing anything about it it was in the first week of august when this happened the second week passed the third week passed the fourth week on the fourth week i went to this other pastor in our township um from the saint john's church um it, it, it was a pastor that i could talk to but we're not really open to each other but I could talk to him then I went to him I told him my story that okay my mom passed away nobody's saying anything nobody's doing anything I really don't know what to do mind you I'm only 13 years that time I, I, I don't know where to start I, do, I don't know what to do I'm not even sure if the the government hasn't buried her yet because nobody has came to 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 claim her corpse then he was like okay don't worry we'll make sure that um we do something about it and then um we 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 buried her in that main and that we buried her i always say she was buried like a dog basically because um her cops came home um on the okay a day before the burial like the normal way it happens and then when we were at the cemetery okay nobody came nobody came on the family everybody had their own things to do some went to their society meetings some went wherever that they went no nobody came it was like the person who passed away is not even a family member it's just someone they know or someone they've heard about okay fair fair enough it's fine we went to the cemetery when we got to the cemetery um there was no pastor to bury the person like there was no one to say um klabati, um klabati, all those things as she was on the funerals so basically she was buried by some guy who was mentally disturbed um a very well-known guy on the township everybody knows that okay this guy is not okay mentally he's the one who did that thing and then yeah the, the box went in and that day passed um but i still remember it like it happened yesterday i wish i could change i could change how she was buried i could change everything about that day but um all is well and then after the funeral we just continued living home this guy that we were living with the one who read me became even a greater monster now like he would now cook and then after cooking after everybody else eats beside except me he would pour water into the pot to make sure that i don't get to get the food like he hated me so much he showed so much hatred at uh, even hate is an understatement i don't know how to call this thing so there's this stranger that my grandmother took in is living with us and he gets to make me live uncomfortable in my own home in my own father's house so life went like days went on on and on and um i was living this terrible life in misery because I'm, I'm looking at my rapist every day the same rapist is making me feel uncomfortable in my own house and then um he raped me again still i couldn't do anything about it and couldn't tell my grandmother I couldn't I couldn't tell anyone and to me it was just like okay it means this is the life now I'm going to live maybe I need to adjust and just tell my mind that this is this is the normal this is okay this is how things should be and then my aunt which now I call my mom um, adopted me in, in, in the midst of all those things that were happening she adopted me my younger sister was left behind with my grandmother so she adopted me because um, the family had had a discussion that they're gonna take me to an orphanage along with with my sister but different orphanages so her husband told her that we do not have a child that's gonna go to an orphanage when the family is so big so she can come here 
if we sleep on an empty stomach she will sleep on an empty stomach if we whatever we eating she will be eating we will find ways to take her to school and um, I just thank God that in the midst of everything that was happening I never I never failed at school because of the situation that I was going through I was everything was just going at school everything was just going even though I was distracted but I passed and um, so they adopted me I lived in Durban then life changed I began to use roll on now I began feeling like a like a kid uh, being the one now who, who who's asking for money for bread like it it, it 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 was comfortable it was an okay life for me they made sure that I go to school I finished my grade 12 and um, I went to to varsity so whilst I was staying with them I think the thing that really helped me the most was that um, the father is a pastor so he could even though it was not a formal cancellation but he could talk to me from now and then so he became very close he became my best friend even now he still is the best that any girl could ever ask for and the best mom any girl could ever ask for so i finished um my tertiary education and then it was still in Durban and then I got in service training here in Gauteng. Then I came to Gauteng, I worked in Randbeck. The first month, I started my, my, in, my in service training on the 3rd of January that year. The first month, everything was fine. Um, I found a place to stay. The second month, still everything was okay. I was staying in Kenton Park, in Glen Marais. Um, I mean, life was okay. So I would walk from Glen Marais to the taxi rank in Kempton Park simply because there were no taxis. The time that I woke up to go to work, there were no taxis. The time that I come back from work, there will be no taxis. So there's this guy, man. I always see this guy when I go to work. I would even check time. When I don't see him, I'd be like, oh, maybe to them late. I don't see this guy who's always following me when I go like the one that we always walk together with when I go to work and when I come back and then this other time I just felt a bit uncomfortable because he was just walking behind me then I tried to walk fast he walked fast slow he walked slow I ran he ran then I could see no 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 this guy is following me then um, I just ran rain i just rain until um i got to the place where i stay and then um i just thought okay maybe um i need to leave the house when there's the sun already maybe there'll be few people walking outside uh, he won't have any chance or maybe he was just trying his luck then the following day um i went to like i, I waited for the sun to come out it was a little bit um late for me to go to work but I did I didn't see him I didn't see him then I go to a taxi rank like the day was normal everything was fine when I came back from work I saw him again then until this other this other day when um I was passing there was an empty house there it, it had something like a, a car wash but I've I, I have I had never seen any any car being washed there just because of my time stands because it was very early in the morning and very late in the afternoon so we when i, I was about to pass that um, empty house that that looks like a car wash he was just behind me I, I, I didn't see him following me from a distance i just saw him when he was just behind me then he grabbed me he threw me on the floor we fought we fought we fought until i managed to to escape then i escaped and then i ran I got home when I got home I told myself that okay this matter needs the police um, there was a police station on that same road uh, I went to the police station I told them my story okay this there's a guy I described the guy he follows me every day like this 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 I told them everything then they said okay it's fine we'll release a police that will always accompany you when you go to work and then will always accompany you also when you come back from work then we'd see this guy for as long as that police was there the guy was never there not following me not seeing him at a distance he was 
nowhere to be found until they were like ah maybe you're just paranoid or something are, are you sure you're okay is there nothing distracting us like no i'm fine um then days went by i would see him i wouldn't see him sometimes i would see him i wouldn't see him then this other day it was on a friday i saw him the minute i saw him i can't remember what happened from there it was like i the, the the last picture that i have is me seeing that oh there he is and then from there i do not know what happened i just remember waking up in this very small smelling dark room um that had a very small table and 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 one chair i remember there was just water on top of the on top of the table so uh in my mind it's it's like i'm dreaming I, I don't know where i am i don't know what happened i don't know what is happening so i feel like maybe i'm dreaming i'm still going to wake up in the midst of all that confusion oh and that time my all my clothes were torn and i was full of don't know if it was water or what what that thing was all over my body but i was wet and then there comes in this lady wearing a short skirt blonde hair with a red lipstick high heels she comes in and then she looks then she's like oh you are awake like yes but where am i what is happening here then she began to say shh then she looked behind her and she said um i was instructed to to give you an injection that's going to make you forget who you are forget what's happening to just forget everything about yourself and remember what we are going to tell you i tried but i just can't i i, I don't know i tried the, like injecting you with that thing i couldn't i don't know why so uh, there's just something about you but i can't i can't inject you with that thing so you are going to help me help yourself i'm going to help you escape uh, but you must know between you and me if this thing fails we both die and still if I let you escape I'm still going to die if you escape alone um, but I'm going to try my best so this is what is going to happen you are going to pretend that you have lost your memory you don't know anything you don't remember anything and I could see that injection oh my god it was so long and and, and so scary I couldn't believe that it was gonna go in my body then she's like so um we're gonna pretend that I, I, I've just injected you if you want to be safe then he went out I could I could hear when she was opening the door I could hear the noise like it, it sounded like people are just having some fun the drinking the smoking and there's a lot of guys and there's a lot of girls I, I, I could hear all that noise then she went out and when she came when when she went out there's this guy he looks so big and so tough he comes in when he comes in he's got this disgusting laugh looking at me and say oh you are awake and then the guy um he put on his condom and then he began to rape me was he was ripping me apart he was just he was just ripping he was he was pounding me and i don't know what to call what he was doing and then after finishing what he was doing he took out the condom and he put it in my mouth for me to swallow even though i did not like swallow it down but he put it in my mouth and then uh, and then he went he went out then the other the other guys came mm. they were all just changing one after another i was not feeling any pain i was just i was just numb it was like i can see that somebody is on top of me but i just see some person bumping on me but i don't feel anything at all my whole body was just numb until until i couldn't even cry anymore there were no tears in my eyes there was just 
nothing i'm hungry i'm thirsty i'm all those things you can think of and then they did what they did and then they went out i was just sitting there and i remember i was i was praying to god i, I had nothing to say to god that much all i was asking him was when is it ever going to end when am i ever am, am i even ever going to breathe in this life Will everything ever be okay? And then this um, this lady, she came back. I think, I don't know if it was night or it was day. I don't know what was happening. But yeah, I remember I slept a bit and then she came back. Then when she came back, she told me that, okay, I could hear that it was a bit quiet. She told me that we can't use the door to get out I'm here to help you get out now but now we can't use the door um, we're gonna have to use the window my whole body is sore because as they were doing all these things they were also beating me I have scratches here on my back like a lot of them because they were just beating me and then she's like we're not gonna use the door so we're just gonna use the window and also I don't have a rope so we're gonna have to make a plan then she came with the towels like she combined the towels like a lot of them um, and then she was like okay come out quickly I came out we are we on this flat it's it, it's the second floor I'm gonna come out from the window because there's nothing that there's no way else to to escape then as um, she was helping me to get out she also told me that I don't have any clothes for you you're gonna have to go out with the ton ones that you have can't do anything the most important thing for us right now is for you to get out of this place then as she was like as, as i was going down on the window and she was slowly letting the towels go when i was going down i had a gunshot and then um she let go of the towels that's when i knew that okay this is it then i ran i didn't want to think about it then right by that time I was just thinking about my life I was just thinking that um, if they could do this to her then it's the same thing they're going to do to me then I passed by the police station when I got there even before I could explain my story I was just trying to tell them that um, what happened then they're like oh okay your Nigerian boyfriends when 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 they buy you weaves and all it's nice but now when they want something else in return you come running to the police station i ran out just ran out i went to my place and from that day i was never the same i was never ever 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 the same i was never the same emotionally i was never the same physically i was a, a chubby person okay my body is back now used to be a chubby person, very bubbly, very happy. I went from size 36 straight to size 28 in two weeks. So even at work, my friends could see that, no man, something is wrong with this person. Uh, my friend that time, who is now my husband, is the one who helped me go through the emotional, emotional journey. Like he would skip work, we go to pastors seeking help because um, my mind was, I think I was a little bit mentally disturbed, I don't know how to call it, because I would just cross the road or cross the robot red and I wouldn't hear anything. Like I would hear the hooters from far, like everything is just far, far, far from my ears and I wouldn't even see people. I was just... When, when when those flashbacks come in my mind, I would just die. I would, I would zoom out of the world and be just a zombie. So he was with me every step of the way. All the challenges that I went through on that very emotional and very traumatizing roller coaster, he was there trying to make sure that I'm fine. It looked like um, we defeated the 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 that spirit from from the rape and everything and the kidnapping and everything that was happening until it came back a couple of months ago this thing I, I, I will sit down alone and just feel like crying anything that hurts me will just trigger this thing to come back but um, 
slowly but surely um, I will get there emotionally I'm still trying to to defeat everything and and be okay but all things to my husband um, I'm, I'm going strong eh, every day it's not every man who can just know what you are going through and know what you exactly went through and be like it's fine I will go through this journey with you not knowing the danger that he's putting himself in not just you himself in because you know you, you're not okay emotionally you may be even interpreting love in a certain way not not like any other normal person you, you just become a special creature let me put it like that but yeah i'm holding on hi my name is Raul Zwane and i've been through the most